Hey, howdy, hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another video. So, do y'all remember when I went and picked up like 40 different enclosures? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that time. Well, now we are kind of on the process of building some of these enclosures. Some I actually got to rebuild for the person I got them from, but a large majority I actually got for myself. And while reptile cages are just plain boring, they're empty, so we are literally going through each cage and rebuilding them piece by piece. We are adding backgrounds, live plants, etc., etc. Just like all the enclosures in my reptile room have a background like that, or maybe they have live plants like that, we're gonna do that with all the other ones I picked up. But first, let's go to the project room. And voila, this is the project room. We've got plants, we've got cages that are being worked on, we've got a vacuum, we've got all sorts of supplies here, just a huge variety of products. In today's video though, more specifically of this series of just going through and building enclosures, we are going to be planting this enclosure here. We've got all these other ones that are empty, which we'll mess with later on. But in this video, we are going to plant this Exoterra enclosure. If I open it up, you guys can see we've already foamed the background. We've already siliconed and everything. It is literally pretty much ready to go. All we've got to do is vacuum out all this debris, add the drainage layer, add the soil, and then plant it. Now let's add our mesh divider. Boom, okay, just like that, the mesh is in the bottom. So now we've done most of the hard work, we just need to add our dirt, then we can get to the fun stuff, which is adding all of these vibrant plants. That is also basically what the video is going to be about, is putting plants in different locations, showing you guys why you wanna plant your enclosure, that sort of stuff. So enough talking, let's add our dirt, then we can start adding the plants. ahead it's going to throw them oh my god i personally like to add the leaves first because once you put the plants in and then add in the leaves the plants will kind of block these corner areas and the leaves won't be able to get all the way back up in there so go ahead add your leaf litter at the next stage of your enclosure just like so just spread it out create a nice good layer of leaves okay the next part is adding the plants this is the fun part this is the most colorful part and this really makes this bland brown cage look way better we're gonna add some of these brahms in here we've got some of these guys that i think will look good and will work great for the frogs that are going inside of the enclosure and then you will also need terrestrial plants so these are going to be our terrestrial plants and the bromeliads will be more of our arboreal plants you of course want arboreal stuff to kind of climb up the background and cover some of this background area and you want terrestrial plants to fill in all of this open space on the bottom and now for example what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bromeliad here we're gonna find a good secure place now it's really just a matter of looking and feeling like this is a decent spot maybe we'll put it over here uh, maybe we'll even put it in the background like that could even do something like this it's really just a matter of playing with it, seeing what works best, seeing what you like to do. Like something like this may work. Once you find those ideal spots and placements for your plant, then you can kind of continue to build it from there. And just like so, we've got our bromeliads in. Now in all honesty, they may move, they may change. I may find a better place for them, but you wanna get kind of a layout. So now that we've got our bromeliads in, kind of our background area, we're gonna add some terrestrial plants, maybe even some vining plants, things like that. 
Now the first terrestrial plant I think we're gonna add is gonna be this arrowhead plant. These guys grow great in really tropical setups and they are, as I said, a terrestrial plant. So we'll probably plant it somewhere like over here, maybe over here, somewhere along the lines of that. Really when it comes to planting, it's just get creative, find little corners that have spaces that can be filled in, find areas that need some greenery. Then as you do that, just plant them there. If you don't like them, you can always move them. As you can see, we've just been getting creative. We've been putting some plants, may add just a touch of moss and in all honesty i am almost out of moss i need to restock so i'm going to use what i have left and then we will just go from there oh boy the setup is complete i'm going to go over in detail why i put plants in certain areas because i did just kind of skip to the part of having the setup complete i also did the other three enclosures so i'll show you how those as well but panning down here is the setup i think it turned out quite well i truly love these glass boxes that create and turn into their own diverse ecosystem we've got our moss up on the top always put moss on the background of the enclosure one because eventually it'll take growth and grow across the background and two it just adds some more green to all of the brown you don't want your cage to be bland so having more color more vibrance is always going to be better we've got another plant up top there that plant should kind of get more bushy and cover this area here and then working our way down our bromeliads we've got two different bromeliads in here now they were kind of hard to plant and they're a little bit crooked this one should kind of take more growth up in this direction over time and then this one will kind of just bloom out that way as well then we've got our arrowhead plants right there I thought these looked good to kind of cover this stick going up we've got some pothos pothos are kind of fill in this corner here some more moss on the bottom just to create that more terrestrial naturalistic appeal and then of course the water dish and some hides for the frogs that will be going in here but all in all this is the first setup there are tons of pieces of wood for animals to climb across and of course the background here for the animal to climb across all in all i am super happy with the way this one turned out and then taking a look at the other three here, we've got this first one, which I think turned out quite nice as well. We've got our nice viney, bushy sort of string of frogs is what that plant is called. We've got a little bushel of plants right here that should hopefully just kind of blossom out towards us some pothos and a palm right to the right hand side. Of course, same thing for the frogs, a water bowl and a hide are always important. This setup looked really good and I left the background bare here for two reasons, because I ran out of moss and because I want these plants over here kind of take over. Now this one, another one I am absolutely very proud of. We'll open it up here. Same thing as usual, water dish, hide as well. But we've got a whole variety of plants in this one. We've got some pothos, some arrowhead. We even got this really nice looking alocasia to stick out right in the middle. Now, while this plant does look kind of bare and does not look very bold, over time, these leaves will broaden. It'll grow more leaves and it'll kind of fill in the center. And that is my goal. I want this plant to become like the center aspect of this whole enclosure. So yes, this little guy may start off small, give him a few months, and this thing should just blossom over everything else. But these pothos will also be pretty good growers. This one will grow across the bottom. This one might bush out a little bit more across the side. Same thing with this one. It should cover this area here. And we've got our moss across the background to tie in everything. In all honesty, without the moss, the enclosure just does not look as good. And this is probably my personal favorite, at least my first or second. I'm not really sure why, but I just love the look of this one. I love the two little Brahms kind of on their own with this one giant Guzmania Brahm. Now, when I say Brahm, I'm referring to a bromeliad, which is a type of plant. These plants here, like this one, those two there, and some of the other ones I showed y'all are bromeliads. Bromeliads work great for dart frogs and in dart frog enclosures, and I think these will do fantastic. These guys should kind of grow out and fill in this top space more. This guy's already massive as it is, and if it does grow a whole lot more, it'll need some cutting back. But that one red star right in the center just catches your eye every single time, so I had to add it in. We got some pothos, some red nerve plants, and just some other basic stuff like that. But in this enclosure, the real eye catcher is that guy right there. And same thing, we've got our hide, we've got our water bowl, we've also got our log on the bottom here that the frogs can climb up and on top of and underneath. And you can never forget the moss to tie it all in. Well, y'all, 
that is it for these enclosures. They look fantastic, and while wow, my back hurts, I will tell you, when building cages like this, your back just starts to hurt. But I did want to inform you guys on a couple of things. Some of these setups that I start building in some of my videos will be available for sale. You may be wondering, how am I going to buy a cage like this and take it home? Well, I will be at a few upcoming pet shows and reptile shows, such as the Repticon Reptile Expo, March 4th and 5th. Along with that expo, I will also be at the Reptilian Nation Expo, which I believe is April 1st and 2nd. Now that show, I should have a lot of tanks at, so if you guys go to that one, definitely come to buy a cage. And then, another one that I will have a ton of tanks at is the Aquashella fish show. So the Aquashella Dallas show should be like May 21st, 22nd. I will be there at Aquashella vending with my own setup and with my own planted tanks. So if you see maybe one of these planted tanks in a video, you may just be able to buy it at an expo. So once again, Repticon, Reptilian Nation, and Aquashella. Definitely stop by, consider making a purchase. I'll also have supplies, animals, cages, all sorts of different things. So definitely stop by. And like I said, I'm going to have a bunch of planted tanks just like these available for sale. So if you want your very own planted tank, maybe for a crested gecko or a dart frog or a milky frog or a dumpy frog or a gargoyle gecko or whatever it may be, you can possibly get one from me at a reptile show. So yeah, just just stay tuned for that. And without further ado, that is it on the projects today. I will be building a whole lot more setups on camera for you guys, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!